Good afternoon. Um, update on the Takamina EN1A. Now, nah, not been a lot of progress on this, uh, but I've had a couple of days off. And um, I'm not going to lie, I've had a couple of days off because I've been watching Wimbledon. And I've been relaxing, I felt like a break, so I've had one. Um, so here I am today to explain, uh, not explain why I've not been working, but to explain where we're going to go now with this Takamini EN18 guitar regarding the refret. Now, as I mentioned before, I was putting on a new nut and a new saddle. Saddle being a Tusk TUSQ and a nut being TUSQ made by Graftech. TUSQ is a man made version of ivory. Uh, perfect for me because I'm vegan so I don't uh, kill animals to make guitar bits myself. Uh, even though if I didn't use, need to use bone, I would do. And to prove that point, I've got a piece of bone which I nearly considered pouring in this guitar. It's a piece of bone from Hosco. Don't know what animal it's from. Anyway, that side removed the old nut from the guitar. See, it's a flat base. And I got the new nut. I didn't realise at the time, but when I bought it, I found out it didn't have a flat base, it had a slanted base because it's for a Martin. So I've had to flatten the nut out, which I've done. I've carved it and it was a little bit wider. It still is a little bit wider than it needs to be, but I think I'm just going to show you. There is a new knot. The reason I chose this knot, even though it didn't have a flat bottom, it was a slanted bottom, is because the string spacing was exactly right for this guitar. 36.3 millimetres, I believe, which is what there is. So you can see there, I'm going to show you, I'm going to take it out, remove it. It's, it's not a super tight fit, but it's a tight enough fit. Still need shaping on the edges there, which I do with, um, I always do with hand files and sandpaper. And I'm going to shave the knot as it is. Like I said, it came slanted, but there it is. And I, it was thicker than I needed it to be. It was about a millimetre thicker. So I've caught, I haven't caught the edge off. I'm going to show you how I shape a knot and how I shape a saddle. So that's quite a bit thinner. It's about a millimetre thinner than it was when I bought it. And I'm going to show how I flatten these and polish up the edge and shape them to get them to fit. I'm also going to show, I'm, I'm going to show, this is a Tuscan tusk material I bought for the saddle. That's the back side. That's the front side. You see I've, caught, I've drawn a radius on there. Now, for all intents and purposes, it's a 16 inch radius which matches the fingerboard, but I've elongated the center. I'm gonna flatten it out a little bit in the center because there's a reason for that. And I'm gonna show you the reason. This is not going on in one piece, it's going on in two pieces. This side, excuse me, I'll pick that back up. Two strings are going on one side and four strings are going on the other and there's an overlap in the center. So I needed to elong el elongate this a little bit. Um, it's still going to be absolutely fine, but I'm going to show you the guitar. And you see this area, you've got a two, that's for two strings, the B and the E, top E and the B. And that's for your first four strings, E, A, D, G. There was a little bit of an overlap, so we need to slightly elongate the radius, which I'm going to do. I'm going to carve that all to shape. Um, I'll be doing that, I'll be using a Dremel and various files and sandpaper and what have you. But this, now if you have a look, that's really quite thin, isn't it? And it is, you'd be thinking, yeah, it is. It's about two and a half, three, it's about three mil now, just under three mil. But when it got here, it was as thick as that. Now let me show you the difference between these two. The bottom piece is quite a bit thicker than the top piece. Now the top piece and the bottom piece were the same thickness, but I needed to sand that. Now normally, if you got some, you do this on something like a belt sander, is what you do it on. But I don't have a belt sander. I don't have a room or facilities for anything, anything like that. So I had to do this by hand. And how do you take a millimetre off the side by hand or off a millimetre by hand? Well, I'll show you. And I'll explain to you. And I'm going to turn the camera just towards another bench. And I'm just going to put it there. And there you go. You get the idea. This is the area we're looking at. And what I do is, I've got a piece of 80 grit paper there. And what I do is normally I can put some double sided sticky tape on there and glue it to the bench or stick it to the bench and I just rub it all over there and that's exactly what I did basically just took the piece and just rubbed and rubbed and rubbed it and sanded it until it was the thickness I wanted and once it was the thickness I wanted I then went with a finer grit now this strip here is 240 grit and it's smooth and this is stuck to the table as you can see and then I just smoothed it off like so so I've got the thickness I desired. Now this is long-winded, you know, it takes time 
it takes patience and it takes quite a bit of elbow grease. Uh, but the thing is, when you're limited in the kind of tools you can use, like I am here, I mean, end of the day, I'm a front room, I'm in the front room of a uh, Terry Stars here. So, because I can't use a box or anything, I actually do it by hand. And the same again with this, the nut. I do my shaping by hand. Um, and I prefer to do this with a file or a, a set of files. Uh, and I use various types. And you'll find that if I'm cutting a nut, I tend to use this one. I can't remember what brand name this is. Is, is it? I'm not sure. But it's a really good, sharp file. It takes a lot of material off. And what I tend to do is I take, I take the main off with this file and you can go across that way or whatever and, and remove a good chunk. Then I resort to my Swiss number three file just for smoothing off. Um, and use various grits of sandpaper and all sorts. When it comes to shaping the nut, I'll just remove a little at a time. By eye, I'll stick the nut on the guitar, like so, I'm just going to show you, because you'll get the idea. And this nut needs shaping, as you'll see. you see there's a little bit of an overlap here, which I'll just take off little by little with a file, and there, there's a one mil overhang there, so I'll remove quite a bit of material off this side. If I show you from the back, you get a better idea. And there you go, can you see that? You get the idea there. And you just take off little bits at a time until uh, you've roughly got the shape. Uh, then you just go with a finer file or finer sandpaper. And it's just a matter of uh, being patient. The important thing on these is to get the um, string slots lined up. Like so. You want your string slots lined up to match the old knot, which this is why I keep the old knot. Get the old knot and you just match the string slots up to that one, where that was. Blah, 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 you get the idea. It's quite awkward to all that one and do that. So that's what I'm doing. And when it comes to doing the slots in the knot and cutting them deeper, you've got a trusty Hosco nut slot files here. So that's it, that's where I am today with this guitar. Um, the hole, I'm not filling the hole in, that's gonna be the last job I do. I'm gonna do a refret first, I've decided. Because that hole, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut that hole, we're gonna reshape it, we're gonna make it a perfect shape because there's too many bits flying about there. Then my Wife is going to come and give me a hand and we're going to stick some, like I said, stick some veneer inside. So today, I'm going to be getting out my soldering iron with the adapted um, piece for removing these frets. Now it's a piece of ebony, it's an ebony fretboard, so we may get a little bit of chipping. And because it's an old piece, I imagine it's going to be quite difficult to get the new frets in. I've, had, I've done a similar job. I'm going to see what they're like when they're out. And I'll decide whether I need to soak the fret slots with some oil, just to soften them up a bit to get the new frets in. So that's where I am today with that. Um, I'm gonna crack on with it. When I've removed some frets, I'll come back and show you the difference um, and see what, what kind of what kind of chipping, if any, if we get any chipping, and uh, we'll take it from there. So I'll be back again with another update uh, in due course. Right, here you go, a bit of a bonus for you here, because I don't normally show all the work I do, um, but because these frets are coming out so well, I'm gonna show you how I remove them. We've got no chipping at all. We have got tiny, we've got a couple of tiny chips. I say not at all, a couple of tiny chips here. But I'm going to show you how our, our I remove frets. And I have an adapted soldering iron here. It gets too, it's a 40 watt soldering iron. It gets too hot, it's too hot for soldering. So I thought I'll get a bit and I'll cut a groove in it. I've adapted it, cut a groove in it. You, you, you can see it there. And it's so I can then heat up the frets. Now, Going to heat up frets. What, what's that, what that's going to do is that's going to melt the glue under the fret and it'll make it easier to remove the fret. To remove the fret, I use basically fret removing pliers, a small plier that's been adapted, it's been ground flat at the end, um, so we can just get under the fret and pull them out. And I've got two pairs I've got my precision pair, heavy duty, these ones, and these are my light duty pair. Um, and depending on what uh, level they are, like these are heavy duty pair, these are more expensive than these, but they both work equally as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I work. So, we want to get the fret out with as little chipping as possible, and we need to clean up all the glue area straight away. Now, I'm going to show you a fret I've already removed. I've removed the first three, as you can see. There's nothing on these frets. This is why it needed a refret. 
I don't know what you can see there, but the fret area there, there's nothing on it, it's less than half a millimetre high, it's why we're replacing them, and it's why we're replacing them in knot as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I remove them. So what I do is I take this soldering iron, I'm going to heat the fret, start in at this end, and you'll see the glue melt. There's nothing on these frets at all. And what, I'll probably, probably better if I zoom in. Let me zoom in and show you where we are. Then you're going to get more of an idea. As you can see, that's the three I've already removed. We'll sand all this area down once we've got them all out. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat this fret. And we're not going to go into the wood. We're not going to heat the wood. See a bit of smoke coming off there. That's the glue melting underneath. See the smoke coming off and all the glue's melting underneath. It's all bubbling away. And there you go. And we'll whiz that back in its holding there. And all we do is then, we're going to go to the far side and we're going to remove the fret. And just go a little bit at a time, eighth of an inch at a time. And there you go. That's the receiver glue bounced back there. You just saw it. That's the fret removed. Just go straight in the bin and what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of uh, steel wool or something and we'll just wipe up that residue of glue. That's all going to go into the steel wool, not into the guitar. Because I'm going to carve these, we're going to clean these out, carve these slots out again. So there you go, that's how we do it. I'll take another one out. These are coming out really, really well. We don't normally come out this well. You normally get a load of chipping with Ebony, but with this we're not. It means went in properly and they were glued properly and blah blah blah. Now the next big problem we're going to have is getting my new frets in, especially at this end because I can't use my um, I can't use my arbor press, I can't press them in, I'm going to hammer them in, in fact I'm going to have to hammer most of them in. So chances are I'm going to hammer the lot in. We will, as they say in the game, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, hammering is no problem. I've just recently did an old Yamaha um, refret with an ebony board, completely hammered all the frets in. Just means you have to be a little bit, you have to do a bit more leveling afterwards, but you know, it's what we paid to do. But these frets, there's nothing on them. It's a 31 year old guitar, nothing on them at all. But these are coming out, they don't always come out like this. Couldn't really ask for a better job than this. So the owner Bob's going to be really happy when I text him later. What I'm going to do, that's it, you just see me take a couple of frets out there, I'll do one more. Um, going really, really well. So they're not on all, normally all this easy, I've just done a any board and it was nowhere near this easy. Ebony does tend to chip more than rosewood. These frets, there's nothing on them. You're going to notice the difference when I get the new frets on because they're one millimetre high. But it's going to get 30 years out on it. So I'll say the next thing I'm going to do once this is done is I'm going to re-radius the fingerboard. We're going to sand all this with a radius block. I'm going to use me. Good, you know, I mean good quality ones won't get in there a lot, I'm going to use the light ones again. Sometimes you have a problem picking the fret out, we've got it. Still might get a bit of chipping here and there. A little bit of chipping on that. Not going to worry about it. That's all going to be filled in. It'll even be covered by the new frets. And there you can see. So very minor chipping, nothing to worry about. The new frets will cover that, but we'll fill in with a bit of glue and dust anyway. Uh, so there you go. That's how I remove frets. I've shown you this example because they're coming out easy. We don't normally, you, you could be effing and jeffing and swearing a bit. So there you go, one, two, three, four, five. I've got six out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, but we've got 14 more to do. So there you go, I'm gonna crack on with that. Um, well, I've got all the frets out and I've sanded the fingerboard ready for refretting. I'll come back and show you how we've gone on uh, back again in a bit. Right, I'm back. And a bit of an observation here, and I don't know why this is, but for whatever reason, you always seem to get chipping at this end. I'm going to bring the camera in. 
but it's like you can't avoid it. No matter what you do at this end, you always seem to get quite a bit of chipping. See how it's all trying to lift there? I don't know how much you can see on my camera, you should be able to see it. And I'm gonna show you one. I've got the soldering iron really hot. This doesn't seem to melt the glue when you're at this end. I don't know if it's just because you're over the body, we use less glue or what, I'm not sure. But it's certainly getting hot enough. But I'm going to remove one and it always seems to want to chip so I'm able to be extra careful at this end when I remove them. There's no melting glue there so I'm wondering if we use less at this end. There is definitely glue in there because when I remove a fresh you can see it, you can see strands of the old glue. You see there's no there's nothing melt there's no melted glue coming off the sides here. It means there wasn't a lot. This soldering iron is really, really hot. I can feel the heat of it on my fingers. But you see, no melted glue there. It's definitely doing something because there's smoke coming off. So let's have a go. Let's remove the threat and see where we are. Now you're going to watch it's going to try and chip along this way here. And also here, look, we can't quite get under it. But there you go. It's trying to chip. Now, I know it's hot because I've had my fingers, that's very hot. But you see there's no steam coming off it, no wet glue residue at the side. So there you go, another one. Don't know why that is, but it's trying to chip at these edges. Now it can make no difference in the end because, like I say, I'm going to run across with some 240 grit or maybe even some 120 grit with a radius block. I've got a 16 inch radius block. Bear with me. Got one here. 16 inch radius block as you see will go across. We'll re-radius the fingerboard. It's whatever radius it is. Blah 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 blah. Uh, well, I'll go across with some coarse grit and then we'll go with some smooth grit like 400 that's already on there. And uh, we'll just basically skim the top off that fingerboard. So all these chips won't matter. They're only little chips anyway, nothing to worry about. But we do that to remove the residue glue and the little indentations here. Then we're going to recut the slots with a saw and um, get it all prepped properly for a refresh. So I'm going to show you one more. Heating the fresh just makes them a lot easier to remove and you've got less chance of getting any chip in. Uh, because if you get big chips you're going to have to fill them all in again with a uh, mixture of wood dust and glue. Time consuming. Then you've got to file it and sand it all flat again. Then you've got to cut the slots again. Slots will be cut anyway. I'll save the slot, cut it, uh, slot cutting. What's that even mean? It sounds disgusting. I'll save the slot cutting probably till the next part of the video. But we'll see. It all depends how many minutes I've got on this part too. So there you again you see a little bit of glue melt on the edges there. I don't normally spend a lot of time videoing work I do or work in progress because it's, doing this video is really really time consuming. I'm a couple of days behind anyway, that's my own fault for watching the tennis but you know. Eighth of an inch at a time, I'll try and show you there, there you go. It's come out quite easy that one. No chipping on there, a little bit of residue. And there you go, three more to do. There's no point me sticking, keep leaving the video there. I'll um, turn the video off for now, I'll come back in a, in a little while. So, here I am, back with this um, Takamine Ian 18. I've just had to turn my phone down because I'm actually in text, te been texting Bobby on a brisk guitar. Um, so yeah, I've got all the frets out and I've sanded the fingerboard down. And there you go. I've just re-radiused it to 16 inches. Looks spanking, looks fantastic. A little bit of chipping here and there, but nothing to worry about. But what I want to do is I want to film this little bit just to wrap up this video, this part of the video. I don't know how long it is, I can't remember how much I've filmed. But what I'm going to do is I've just taken the frets out and there's nothing left on them. 
I think they were really, really low. But I've just measured them, and they're coming up between about 2.42 millimeters wide. So I imagine with 2.4 or 2.5 mil, probably 2.4. But I've told Bob I'm going to go with. I'm refretting with 18% nickel silver. I'm going with 2.7 wire. It's 2.7 mil wide. And it's 1.1 millimeter high. I'm going to actually take some height off. Going to get it down to about a millimeter. But that'll come with the leveling of the frets anyway. Once they're in. So I'm just waiting for a text back off Bob to see if he's happy we're going a little bit wider. I would recommend it because it hides glue uh, or any chipping or whatever. It's not going to make that much bit of a difference. But if Bob wants to go back with the same width fret wire, I'll go and get some. Uh, I'll, I'll get some tomorrow to see what he's saying here. Eh? I shouldn't think it'll make a great difference. I'll go with your recommendation. There you go. That's Bob. He's just got back to me. I would recommend always going a little bit wider anyway. We always do that as a matter of course because... Um, frets you can have a look at the frets here just go a little bit wider I'll hide anything that doesn't need to be on show not that there's anything in there that doesn't need to be on show um, there's a little bit of chipping down this far end like I said but nothing that won't be covered by the frets so we're going to go with that so basically I'm going to get this all straightened out and I'm going to re-radius it to 16 well it's radius to 16 inch anyway flat. so I'm going to put a little bit more of a curve in there I'm going to crack on with the refret on this tomorrow what I've decided to do is a little bit of discolouring on the far end, or a bit of bleaching on this far end of this fingerboard. I'm going to restain this fingerboard before I do the read for it. And what I use to stain is I use Rustin's wood dye. Uh, this stuff, it's fantastic stuff. I'll get two or three coats of that just to darken it up a little bit, just to you know make it look a little bit nicer, make it more even. There's a beautiful grain going down this ebony. Eh? So we don't want to lose that grain, but we just want to make the fingerboard just a, a more even colour all the way along. So what I'm going to do is next, I'm going to tape up this fingerboard, not fingerboard, I'm going to tape around this area uh, before I stain that. And I'm going to go and have a look at this, that hole in there, and look about filling that in. My wife's back now, so we could possibly get some veneer in that today. And I could look at building that up and filling that. So, nice steady process with this guitar. We're in no major rush. There's a little bit of area here. I'm going to fill these in with um, a little bit of chip in there. Look, I'm going to fill that. I won't even try to get away with something like that. So, a couple of areas I'm going to fill. No major work. It's not going to pour us uh, pour us out a joint or, or anything here. Uh, just normal path, of course. I normally expect with an ebony board to get more chipping than we've actually got. So, I'm really quite pleased with how that's gone. Um, so I'm going to blob on with it, I'm going to wrap this part of the video up um, because I think it's gone on pretty much long enough. I'm going to wrap this, like I said, I'm going to wrap this part of the video up and uh, we'll come back in part three and we'll show, I think in part three I'm going to show, um, I'll show what we've done on the fingerboard. It's going to be about prepping the fingerboard properly. It's half prepped now but I wouldn't go and do a refret as it is, there's a couple of areas I need to fill in. So I'm going to come back, when we come back in part three I'm going to show you how we prep the fingerboard and uh, ready for re-slotting and that's going to be uh, for refretting and that will include uh, recutting the slots in the fingerboard and we'll get all the get all the parts of the guitar body all mashed up masked not mashed masked up and uh, we'll start to cut some new uh, fret slots or we'll recut the old fret slots make sure they're all deep enough make sure we're going to take the frets well and i'll show you how we prep the frets and everything and uh, we'll take it from there so two back in part three later <laughs> 